James Webb Space Telescope. Astronomers have spotted six massive galaxies and they date back to within 500 and 700 million years after the Big Bang. What if everything we thought we knew about the universe, its beginning, its rules, even gravity itself was wrong? The James Webb Space Telescope is capturing images so deep, so ancient, they're shaking the very pillars of physics. Galaxies too old to exist, gravity bending in impossible ways, and the eerie silence of the cosmos, all pointing to one chilling conclusion. As this evidence mounted, even Michio Kaku, one of Einstein's most passionate defenders, couldn't hold back tears. The universe, it seems, has been hiding the truth. And now, piece by piece, it's finally revealing its greatest secrets. The Webb Telescope just shattered reality. The Webb Telescope has caught galaxies that shock scientists. Some are massive and full-grown just 200, 300 million years after the Big Bang. That's like spotting a fully grown oak tree in what should be a sapling seedling. How did these structures build so fast? Our standard cosmic model, which assumes slow growth, can't explain it. So Webb's findings are rewriting the timeline. Next, gravity isn't playing by Einstein's rules. Normally, gravity weakens with distance, like a tug of war rope getting slacker the farther you pull. But Webb sees galaxies pulling together in unexpected ways at huge scales. These galaxies act like gravity is stronger farther out, not weaker. Pushed by data, some scientists are exploring modified Newtonian dynamics, or alternate gravity ideas where Einstein's theory may need updating when we zoom out. That leads us to dark matter itself. We've used this invisible stuff to explain missing gravity, but if gravity works differently than we thought, or if galaxies form way too quickly, then dark matter may not be doing what we assumed. Maybe it doesn't exist, or it's doing something else entirely. We're forced to ask, did we misunderstand dark matter all along? Then there's the cosmic microwave background, the Big Bang's baby photo. If early galaxies emit more background radiation than we thought, that picture might be smeared. Even a small galactic glow added to that universal snapshot can change how we interpret the universe's age and expansion. Our most sacred evidence could be partly photobombed. Next up, we'll explore the emotional fallout of these discoveries. Even a leading physicist like Michio Kaku is reacting. First, let's step into the human moment behind the data. Michio Kaku breaks down. When leading cosmologists hear Webb's data, some say our beloved cosmic story is unraveling. Our standard model, a century in the making, is showing cracks. The timeline for galaxy formation is collapsing, with uniform spin-aligned galaxies appearing early on. That shakes the idea of randomness we've held since the Big Bang. Michio Kaku's reaction captures this cosmic shakeup. On camera, he's emotional, calling for textbook rewrites and saying, our assumptions need radical updating. When a physicist who spent decades expounding Einstein's theories starts tearing up, it's not drama, it's seismic. He's facing a reality where history's blueprint may be wrong. Then there's the S8 tension, a scientific glitch that's gone from curiosity to crisis. It measures how clumpy matter is today versus what early observations predicted. Webb confirms our cosmos is less clumpy than expected suggesting one of two things. Either our early universe models lied or unseen processes smoothed things out. Either way, it's a mystery. When you see someone like Kaku say, Einstein's math still works here, but not there, you realize this isn't a rejection of relativity, just its limits. He admits, we're standing at the edge of what we know. And yes, time itself may be up for question. If space and matter don't behave, why would time? From emotional reckonings, we pivot to the real nuts and bolts. Could gravity itself be broken? Let's dig into that next. Is gravity broken? In the 1970s, Vera Rubin famously discovered. Discovered galaxies spin faster at the edges than expected, like a merry-go-round's outer horses flinging out but staying in place. We blamed it on unseen dark matter. But Webb revisited this phenomenon in way more galaxies, and now it's happening on cosmic scales meaning something big is off. This brings MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics, into focus, a theory that tweaks gravity's law at low accelerations. 
Webb's early data seems to support Imundi more than Einstein's general relativity when dealing with whole galaxies. GR still works locally, like near Earth or Sun, but on cosmic scales, things don't match. Could gravity itself behave differently far out in space? Then we have the Hubble tension again. Two measurements give different speeds of expansion. Webb supports the faster rate, which suggests dark energy or gravity may be evolving. If gravity changes over time or distance, we might need brand new physics, something to hold the cosmic story together. Finally, Webb has captured the cosmic web itself, the great filaments and voids that make the universe look like a lacy net. These structures are too massive and well-formed too soon. In short, gravity either acted faster than we think or something else shaped these cosmic highways. So yes, Webb isn't just taking pretty pictures, it's waving a giant red flag over gravity, and early signs say we better listen carefully. Dark matter might not be real. For decades, dark matter has been the glue we couldn't see, the invisible scaffolding supposedly holding galaxies together. But now the Webb telescope has found galaxies too big and too well-formed way too early. They didn't have time to gather slowly around dark matter halos. It's like walking into a construction site and seeing skyscrapers that shouldn't even have blueprints yet. We thought dark matter acted like a frame for building galaxies. It would clump first, then pull in regular matter with gravity. But Webb sees giant galaxies forming before this process could logically happen. So the idea of dark matter as the universe's scaffolding is in serious trouble. That's where Ramon D, modified Newtonian dynamics, steps in again. Webb's data matches Mondi predictions better than traditional dark matter models. Mond doesn't need invisible stuff. It just changes how gravity works at huge distances. While not perfect, it seems to fit what Webb is actually seeing. And now, even the CMB, the baby photo of the universe, is looking suspicious. If the light from early galaxies mimics the CMB's glow, then some of that background radiation might not be from the Big Bang at all. If it's just accumulated light from ancient galaxies, the entire foundation of our dark matter and early universe theories might be built on a misunderstanding. So if the very matter we thought ran the show might not be real, what about the beginning of everything itself? Next, we'll explore a bold idea. Maybe the Big Bang wasn't even the start. The Big Bang wasn't the beginning. One of the most shocking twists in modern cosmology is that the cosmic microwave background what we believed was the leftover glow from the Big Bang may not be what we thought. Webb suggests that light from early, densely packed galaxies could contribute to what we thought was the universe's original afterglow. This changes everything. And there's more. Those galaxies Webb is spotting from deep time, many are spinning in the same direction. That's weird. If the universe began in pure chaos, we should see random motion. But instead, we're seeing alignment. Almost like the universe started with a cosmic spin. It's as if the Big Bang wasn't a bang at all, but a continuation of something already in motion. That theory gained steam with the black hole bounce model. Instead of exploding from nothing, our universe could have formed inside a black hole. Matter collapsed in one universe and rebounded into another, ours. This would explain why we can't see beyond our universe. The edge might literally be a black hole's event horizon. And this idea isn't fringe anymore. Nobel Prize winner Roger Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology says the universe goes through endless cycles. Each Big Bang is just a rebirth from a previous cosmic era. Webb's data, especially those patterns in deep time structures, fits this model better than traditional timelines. But if we really are just the next chapter in an infinite cosmic loop, then where are we? What kind of place is this really? The next script goes even deeper. Are we living inside a black hole? Imagine the universe not as a vast open space, but as the inside of a cosmic bubble. That's what the black hole universe theory suggests. According to this model, our entire universe exists on the inside of a black hole. The event horizon we can't see beyond isn't some boundary in space. It's the literal edge of reality. Here's how it might work. In another universe, a massive star collapsed. But instead of forming a singularity, an infinitely small point, it rebounded. That explosion didn't destroy, it created. The matter from that collapse became our universe. 
expanding outward from a bounce, not a bang. Webb's findings support this in strange ways. The huge structures it sees, the way galaxies align early on, the missing randomness, they all match predictions of this black hole bounce theory. In fact, some of Webb's measurements, like redshift curves, align more with this rebound model than with traditional inflation theory. And again, Roger Penrose's cyclical model supports this idea. Each universe, or eon, leads into the next through collapse and expansion. Webb might be seeing the aftershocks of a previous universe imprinted on ours. If true, the universe didn't begin. It's just the latest reboot in an infinite series. All of this might make you wonder. If the cosmos has been this active, with so many galaxies, where is everyone? That's what we tackle next. Why is the universe so quiet? The Webb Telescope has observed over 30,000 galaxies in just a small corner of the sky. That's staggering. It implies hundreds of billions across the whole universe. And yet, no radio signals, no signs of civilization, nothing, just silence. With so many planets and stars out there, this silence is deafening. It's made even stranger by the fact that these galaxies are showing ordered spin, many twirling in the same direction. That challenges the idea that the early universe was chaotic. It hints that something orderly or planned seeded our cosmos. And yet, where are the civilizations we expected? This brings us to the Fermi paradox, the question of why, if intelligent life should be common, none has contacted us. With Webb's expanded view of galactic diversity and age, this paradox just became more intense. If other advanced civilizations exist or existed, shouldn't we see at least one? One possibility is the dark forest theory, the idea that advanced civilizations stay quiet on purpose. Maybe the universe is a silent battlefield where speaking up means being eliminated. Or maybe civilizations just burn out too fast. But maybe, just maybe, the universe isn't silent. Maybe it's just quieter than we know how to hear. Silence is eerie, but maybe the real fear isn't that we're alone, but that the universe itself is hiding something. Let's wrap up with all the lies we've uncovered. Cosmic conspiracy? Let's put it all together. First, the Hubble tension. We measure the universe's expansion in two ways and get two different answers. Webb confirms the faster one, but our early models support the slower. It's a serious conflict, and it means something big isn't adding up. Then there's the S8 clumpiness problem. The universe is less clumpy than it should be if gravity and dark matter worked the way we thought. Webb's view shows smoothness where chaos should reign. These aren't just small measurement errors. They're consistent across the board. And gravity, our old friend, now behaves like it has a split personality. Sometimes it pulls just as we expect. Other times, galaxies spin too fast or clump too soon. We built a whole dark matter story to explain this. But what if we were just patching holes in a broken model? Lastly, our sacred CMB is now in question. If Webb's right and early galaxy light mimics or adds to that ancient glow, then our map of the universe's origin might be wrong. We might be looking at a mirage, one that fooled us for decades. So where does that leave us? The James Webb Space Telescope wasn't supposed to shatter the foundations of physics. It was meant to deepen our view, sharpen our focus, maybe confirm what we thought we already knew. But instead, it's pulled back the curtain, and what's behind it is weirder, older, and more organized than anyone expected. Galaxies forming too soon, gravity acting strange, dark matter looking suspiciously absent, even the so-called baby picture of the universe, the cosmic microwave background is now under question. It's not just one crack in the wall, it's the entire structure starting to bend. And for Michio Kaku, a man who built his career explaining the elegance of Einstein's universe, that realization cuts deep. In his own words, theories don't just collapse, they evolve. But sometimes evolution looks a lot like revolution. Watching him react isn't just witnessing a scientist in shock, it's watching someone face the collapse of a cosmic story they once helped tell. But maybe that's the beauty of science, the willingness to say we were wrong and then start the search again. Wider, deeper, freer. The Webb Telescope isn't just capturing images. It's forcing us to ask better questions. 
Maybe gravity isn't what we thought. Maybe the Big Bang wasn't the beginning. Maybe we're not outside looking in, but inside looking out. The universe may not owe us easy answers, but it does reward curiosity. And right now, curiosity is everything. So buckle up, because if this is the beginning of the end for Einstein's universe, then it's also the dawn of something even bigger. The story's just getting started.